Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the News at 6. I'm Brent Hart. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. New tonight, police arrest one worker and say more arrests are possible. They're investigating abuse allegations at a Middletown Child Care and Learning Center. Police say a teacher threw a toddler causing the child to hit its head. Fox 61's Matt Karen is live in Middletown with what we know. Matt? Well, near where we are standing is the Town and Country Early Childhood Learning Center. They also have locations in Southington and Colchester. But police say it was here in Middletown back in January where they were called for the report of a two year old being assaulted by a teacher. This is the town and country early learning center in Middletown. This is the arrest warrant for 47 year old Christy Kavarsik of Haddam. She's charged with risk of injury to a minor and reckless endangerment. At her address, nobody answered the door. A man in the backyard told us to leave. You want us to leave? Sure. All right, thank you. On January 12th, police were called to the learning center following a report that Kavarsik, a teacher, assaulted a two year old. Police reviewed security cameras that the warrant says show Kavarsik grabbed the victim's shirt with both hands and launched the victim through the air like a piece of luggage. The police go on to say the child's head then struck a nearby wall. We tried to get some answers. I'm Matt Karen. I'm with Fox 61 News. We are not authorized to speak. The center got back to us with a statement that reads in part, they notified the appropriate state authorities and terminated the employee. It goes on to say our safety and training protocols are among the strictest in the industry. As police reviewed more surveillance video, they discovered it wasn't an isolated incident. The warrant describing other incidents of Christie lifting a second young child out of a chair by the shirt and dropping them to the ground, minutes later kicking the victim. Police obtained a search warrant. There is a hard drive containing digital video surveillance of the daycare center that is now in the custody of police. And though Fox 61 could not reach Kavarsik for comment, she did give an interview to police, where she told them, I just kind of lost my cool, going on to say the classroom was chaotic and that she did not have support from the daycare. There is no justification whatsoever for what these children endured, and we will see to it that justice is served. Now, police say this investigation is far from over, and the State Department of Children and Families confirmed to Fox 61 that they are also involved. They sent us a statement that you can read on our website, fox61.com. Reporting in Middletown, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Matt, thank you. The defense rested its case today in the trial of Trooper Brian North after calling its last two witnesses to the stand. Fox 61's Joy LeBlanc has been covering this trial from the very beginning, and she has the latest. Simply put, uh, Trooper North's statement uh, aligns with what, we, what I understand about perception response time from the relevant research. Coming all the way from Colorado, former police officer Professor Paul Taylor was tasked years ago with looking at the actions and statements of Trooper Brian North from the night of the shooting on January 15, 2020. Trooper North was not shooting in response. He, he did not make a decision to shoot in response to the taser deployment. Now, the, the follow-up question to that is, uh, could it have been that it was a startle response? That is, there was suddenly a taser deployment and Trooper North had a startle response. Well, behaviorally, there's a couple of things that tell me that's, that's not very likely. Taylor analyzed moments like this one where North testified he thought 19 year old Mubarak Suleiman was lunging at the other officers on the passenger side of the car with a knife in his hand. So North says he shot him to protect them. The things that officer or that trooper North describe as occurring when he made the decision to pull the trigger uh, are in fact supported by the perception response times that we see in laboratory studies. Inspector General Robert Devlin challenging that statement, pointing to another one made by North when he took the stand. North says he thought one of the officers was reaching into the car at the same time Suleiman pulled out a knife. I'm asking you for your observation of this body worn camera. Was it swinging around or not? Sir, I, I can't what see. What do you mean? You can't answer that? <laughs> no, I can't answer that right, based fine, on, thank you. on the that's vision. It, that's your answer. The defense calling on another consultant and former police officer. Flying in from Nevada this week, James Borden also analyzed the incident. What was your analysis regarding this first issue that you just spoke of? Um, that the use of force in this case was 
uh, appropriate based on a foundation of Objection, all Honor. objection sustained. Borden's focus was on North's perception at the time of the shooting and the threat he claims he and the other officers were facing. Was there evidence to substantiate that belief? The officer stated that they felt there was a threat because of X, Y, and Z. All right, does X, Y, and Z exist in the form of evidence? And in this case, it was. Devlin closes in during cross-examination. You're mincing my terms. Your Honor, would you like me to re-explain what I said? No, I'll ask the question, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, the state will be calling a rebuttal witness tomorrow morning, and shortly after, the judge asked the attorneys to be ready for closing arguments. And if there's time, the judge hopes to instruct the jury and get them ready for deliberations. We are in Milford. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And Julia, thank you. West Hartford police have arrested a man in connection to a robbery that happened at a big Y in January. Manuel Gunnels is accused of demanding money from the customer service desk of the North Main Street store. Police say he implied he had a gun but didn't show one. Gunnels ran off with an undisclosed amount of money. He is now being held on $50,000 bond. Time for a check of the weather. A mild day across the state. We loved it, but will it last? Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with the answer. Rach. We have two more warm days, and it's going to go along with dry weather to, to really allow you to spend some time outside. Take a look at this shot over Hartford right now. Not only are we enjoying those later sunsets, but we're also enjoying not a single cloud in the sky. Today's high temperature for the Hartford area up around the 60 degree mark. The average high for this time of year is in the mid 40s. So we are way over that 63 right now in the New Haven area and middle 50s in Norwich. But we are still feeling the wind. It's gusting up between 20 to as high as 30 miles per hour. Nowhere near as blustery as it was yesterday, but you're still noticing a bit of a breeze. Notice as we head through the evening tonight, that wind, which is blowing out of the north and the west, will slowly continue to diminish as we head towards daybreak eventually going calm. Low temperatures tonight will be falling back into the 30s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. We are starting off there as we wake up tomorrow morning with a mix of sun and clouds. By lunchtime, we're in the low 50s and we'll see high temperatures tomorrow climb up around 60 degrees as we head through the afternoon. And it's even warmer than this for Thursday. We'll take a look at when this comes to an end and timing out some rain to finish off the work week coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. And now to a report raising concerns among people in the Naugatuck Valley. Officials say a dam there is at risk of breaching because it has major structural issues. The Copon Dam is not functioning today since it is scheduled to be removed. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin spoke to officials who say they're looking for a fast fix to keep people safe. Well, originally this removal project was expected to not only restore the river, but also bring some pretty fun opportunities for the public to access this land and water. But now after that inspection report, leaders say they're worried about the safety of the towns in this area after significant structural issues were found. The Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments has had plans to acquire and remove the Kinneytown Dam by 2026. But before the group can do that, an alarming new report shows it must be stabilized as it has major damage and could fail at any time. Safe to say a lot of water, uh, about 600 acre feet of water would be rushing down the river, end up in the Housatonic River and then out to Long Island Sound. He tells us the dam is privately owned by Hydroland Omega, making the fix and the cost their responsibility. But he says so far the company is not coming to the table willingly. The lawyers have communications with the owners. It's not a direct communication. I wouldn't call it a conversation. The group says the Copon Dam was built back in 1845. It's since been non-operational for many years and deemed abandoned. In fact, it's not even federally registered. The engineers have looked at the structure. They say it's in poor condition, it's unstable, it hasn't been maintained, and there's evidence of water both overtopping and seeping through. Because of this, advocates want to change the landscape to benefit everyone. There'll be more. There'll be walking trails along the side. There'll be boating events, and we've already started some of that. But this, this keystone that we were waiting to do, waiting to remove, is what's going to unlock the entire potential of this system. 
Leaders say there is a simple fix to move along the project. The water levels in Co Pond need to be lowered, relieving the pressure on the crumbling dam. This could be done within the next 60 days if all goes well. And this is something that we will be following closely as they do start to come up with that plan and then move forward through the processes to keep everybody safe. We will, of course, update everyone as we have more information. In Ansonia, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Happening tonight in Cromwell, a Board of Education meeting, and it's the first since allegations of racial bullying at the high school surfaced. The meeting is scheduled to run from 7 to 9 tonight at Cromwell High School. Connecticut's news station brought you the story of two black sisters who say they experienced both verbal and physical harassment for years while going to school in Cromwell. Local leaders have reacted to the story, recommending policies to eliminate any racism in the school community.